In the headlines, several area people are arrested this week after their alleged heist. And police say they are still searching for a man that assaulted a local woman, even taking her breathing apparatus. That's in today's crime report. Also, we follow up with several businesses still in uproar about the Department of Transportation's Winstead Avenue widening project in Rocky Mount. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Hello and thanks for tuning in to WHIG TV Newsbreak, your voice in the community. I'm Marie Torres. First up in our crime report, police are searching for a man who assaulted his girlfriend. According to Rocky Mount PD, a 51-year-old woman was attacked at her home on 1708 Fletcher Drive Tuesday morning by 42-year-old Milton Ray Battle. It said after the assault, Battle took his girlfriend's cell phone and left. He is now wanted for a common law robbery, assault by strangulation, and assault on a female. Battle had yet to be located at the time of this report. If you know his whereabouts, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 252-977-1111. Several area people are arrested this week after their alleged heist. Rocky Mount police say while initially investigating a larceny from a U-Haul trailer attached to a vehicle parked in the parking lot of Double Tree Hotel on 651 North Wesleyan Boulevard, officers were able to identify those suspects, also possible suspects, and other breaking and entering cases at homes on Fox Hall Drive at the beginning of March. Those now facing charges are 20-year-old Kevin Johnson, 18-year-old Jonathan Cross, 21-year-old Tiffany Davis, and 22-year-old Tierra Dancy. Their charges include breaking and entering, damage to property, accessory after the fact, obtaining property by false pretenses, and possession of stolen property. All were transported to the Nash County Jail. Officers are continuing to establish links with these suspects to other breaking and entering cases. Police say this is an ongoing investigation and further charges are pending. A man and a woman are also on the authorities wanted list. Rocky Mount PD says 39-year-old Lisa Harper Smith is wanted for a felony larceny and obtaining property by false pretenses. She also has active failure to appear warrants for driving while license revoked and speeding from Pitt County. The other suspect, 38-year-old William Lee Register, is wanted on charges of failure to appear related to driving while impaired, driving while license revoked, and two counts of financial card fraud stemming from warrants in Nash, Wake, and Pitt County. The two may be operating a 2006 through 2008 Burgundy Toyota Tacoma truck. Police say they are known to frequent the U.S. Highway 301 motel areas in Rocky Mount. If you know the whereabouts of these suspects, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. And police say they are still searching for a man that assaulted a local woman, even taking her breathing apparatus. According to Rocky Mount PD, this week at a home on 1716 Fletcher Drive, the 46-year-old woman was allegedly attacked by friend, 47-year-old Henry McDonald Ricks Jr. Ricks fled the scene shortly after the incident. Warrants have been obtained on Ricks for assault, inflicting serious injury and assault on a female. He had yet to be located at the time of this report. In other news, several businesses remain in uproar about the Department of Transportation's Winstead Avenue widening project in Rocky Mount. Recently, we spoke to some of those business owners as well as DOT about the project that would put a median in the road. Some are saying it would prevent customers from easily accessing businesses. On 1081 Winstead Avenue, owner of John's Gifts and Reproductions, Carolyn Atkinson, has an even more prevalent problem on her hands. Atkinson told us that she does doesn't understand how the city of Rocky Mount wants more businesses to come to the area when they would allow such businesses to suffer from DOT's road construction projects. The exit in Anna Park is so dangerous that nine out of, out of ten customers complain. Um, it's real dangerous getting in and out. 
plus the view on my building, you can't see it. They put me down in a hole and uh, I can just see the top of my cars, you know, the top of the cars at the road. So definitely it has hurt, but uh, I'm still hanging in there and uh, it's, it's, it's been a major problem for all the business along here. Right. Had you spoken to DOT? Oh yes, yes. We did not know the road was going to be built that high. During the summer, they uh, had dirt up there, and uh, we thought they said just you know dirt that they piled up there you know for a while. We thought it was coming down, it never came down, and they had put the road up so high, and it's completely uh, hurt the value of my building, very much so. Now, when uh, they finish, they complete this project, do you think there'll be any modifications to how they already have it now? No, they, the roads will be built up. It's going to stay that high. Oh, wow. So, you know, they, they are saying that this is the third attempt to try to fix my driveway uh, so it won't be so steep, you know, when the customer, it's like, uh, you know, when you go up, it's it's real dangerous, you know, going out. But when they do the medium, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to be left. But, yeah, all, I've been very much affected as far as the view on my building. And my type business is I appeal, and you can't even see the parking lot when you're coming from Hunter Hill Road, from L&L. &L. You can't even see, you can just see the top of my building. Lisa Therrington of Superior Dry Cleaners, located at 139 North Winstead Avenue, also says the project could have a huge impact on her business as well. I feel that the widening project is actually part of the Northern Connector. What is happening that's going to directly um, have a negative impact on the local businesses on Winston Avenue is the hard median that they are planning to put in on Superior Dry Cleaners on Winston Avenue and there will be a hard median that will limit access in and out. You'll only be able to uh, get in by turning right and turning right going back out so it will directly be affected. Uh, a dry cleaners is a uh, business of convenience. I've spoken to DOT on several times. I even um, contacted um, them about doing a recount on the uh, traffic and the traffic numbers once they did the traffic study was down and I was originally told by DOT that uh, if the numbers were down, they would revisit how the project was designed by meaning the hard median. And the traffic numbers are down and they're still going forward. And, I, you know, my point the whole time is we can put a median in in five years when the traffic count rises. But right now it just does not call for that hard median that's going to directly have a negative impact on the businesses in Rocky Mount. And Rocky Mount does not need anything negative to impact any local business. Last night, NCDOT's Bobby Lewis made a guest appearance on WHIG TV show Tri-County Spin. Here's what he said to host Sandra Smith and Cameron Matthews about the project. Okay, well, what I probably would like to do is uh, just talk generally about how projects are how born. How they are born, okay. Sure, sure. And uh, in short, um, I think a lot of you've heard of the thoroughfare plans uh, and how they come about. That's, that's uh, brought in by DOT, uh, the locals being the city of Rocky Mount, uh, or any town that you may right. be in for that county, and the county members, uh, and any other municipalities within that county. Well, when you come together, you, you decide, uh, say this was back in 1980, uh, right. you'll decide basically lines on a map and decide what projects do you hope to have growth in that particular area where you, you would need uh, a wider street, uh, more lanes, uh, new location routes like Northern Connector, or maybe it was uh, six, US 64 from years ago. So you'll decide where you want these multi-lane facilities and uh, things of that nature. Here, where it's very exciting, because right now in Rocky Mount, you know, we have Winston Avenue getting ready to come upon us. We have Hunter Hill. Uh, we have uh, Country Club mm -hmm. within the next year. Absolutely. We have 
uh, long overdue uh, projects like Layman's Ferry Bridge to mm -hmm. be replaced, oh, uh, yes. the Springfield uh, Road. So we have a lot of great things going on in Rocky Mount, but in truth, Winston Avenue is just like Hunter Hill and the other projects. Uh, they were born years ago. Years ago. And then what happens is uh, you'll decide kind of what is the best measure for the traffic demand. Uh, measures being what's safe and what will be reliable for years to come. Right. Um, here at Winston Avenue, everybody knows it's going to have a median. It won't have a left turn or left turns unless you're at intersections. Uh, and it'll be multi-lanes. What we hope is that over time, uh, uh, you, you'll definitely see a safety benefit once the uh, construction is uh, taken care of. The entire multi-million dollar project is funded through 2020 by the Department of Transportation. We'll be keeping you up dated with the latest of this project. When we return on news break, Sanderson Farms may have gotten a thumbs down from Nash County's planning board on the building of a chicken processing plant in the area. And our pet of the week is hoping to steal your heart. This and more right after these words. All these cars come with a lifetime guarantee. Lifetime? That's a long time! But that's not all. They also come with free maintenance services for life and loaner cars too. Good grief! Where can you find protection like that? Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. It's called Dealership for Life. And it comes on Buicks, GMCs, Hondas, and even pre-owned vehicles at Davenport. Used cars too? Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. Your dealership for life. Drive the best. When it's happening to you, you'll hear from us. WHIG-TV Newsbreak is reporting on the news, issues, and stories that matter to you. Call us at 252-885-1814, email us at marie.whigtv at gmail.com, or check us streaming live at whigtv.com. We're your voice, ready to bring you the news. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Welcome back to WHIG TV News Break. I'm Marie Torres. Majority ruled in a recent meeting to deny the rezoning of land that was hoped to be grabbed up by highly controversial chicken producer Sanderson Farms. In a 5 to 3 vote, Nash County Planning Board members opted to deny rezoning 150 acres of land on NC Highway 97 near Interstate 95, designated as a possible site for a Sanderson Farms processing plant. The initial plan okayed by Nash County Board of Commissioners was to rezone the land to a general industrial classification, allowing for a variety of business and industrial usage. However, after a change in regulation from the county's land ordinance, the decision was once again reopened. Some planning board members say they felt duped because a representative from Coastal Plain Land LLC was used to solicit the rezoning, when in reality it was by Sanderson Farms' backing. On April 4th at 10 a.m., a final determination on the rezoning will take place after a public hearing at the Nash County Board of Commissioners meeting. 
In other news, Nash County Sheriff's Office is proud to say it's helped prevent unused drugs from getting into the wrong hands. Tuesday at the Ward Drug Co. in Nashville, participants in Operation Medicine Drop turned in an overwhelming 32,000 dosage units of medicine. The Sheriff's Office says that included nearly 2,000 controlled substances, nearly 15,000 prescription drugs, and nearly 6,000 over-the-counter drugs. The medicine collected will be destroyed. Now for some really something really lovable, here's our Pet of the Week. Russell. He's a Doberman mix. He's about one to two years old. He's up to date on all his shots. He's been neutered. And he's undergoing a slow uh, month, a heart, month of heartworm treatment. And um, he's house trained. He gets along with other dogs and uh, small dogs, big dogs, kids, um, and he can visit cats also. But he just needs a good home with a fenced in yard so that he can have room to run. Um, he's just a lovable boy. He loves to ride in the car and go for runs and walks and you name it. Just wherever you're at is where he wants to be. <laughs> play right at your feet. And, Go to sleep. He's a good He's birdie. Boy. He was found as a stray out in the country. Somebody dropped him off and he was a bag of bones. He's nothing but skin and bones. So now he's, he was 40 pounds and now he's up to 60 pounds. So he's got his, he's got a good appetite and he's just a, be a loyal companion for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll sit and he'll shake. He's already learned how to sit and shake. Yeah, so we've been working on that, working on teaching him how to fetch now. So, okay. yeah. He's, do we know how old he is? Just yeah, about? They said he's between a, <laughs> one and two years old, probably closer to a year. He's, he's still like got a lot of puppy in him. He's she, silly. Yeah, he's not. Hot, he's just silly. Like she said, he's just silly. That's all he is. You know, he just he just wants the attention. I mean, just constantly wants to be rubbed and have belly rubs. But he would do good with kids or anybody really. But uh, he's just a good dog. Okay. And as always, make sure you let everybody know why it's so important to to adopt and spay and neuter. You have to spay and neuter to cut back on the overpopulation. Um, there's so many dogs in the shelters now and so many they're just wandering, you know, wandering around homeless that need homes and spaying and neutering will help cut back on that and always look at your local shelter for your next companion because they could be there. Okay, any information on, on Russell or any contacts? Uh, Russell, if you are interested in him, you can call me and my name's Julie and the number is 883-8434. So give me a call. All right. All right, Russell. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. After the break, it's your look at sports and weather. Stay with us. The Better Business Bureau gives this dealership an A-plus rating. Their customers rated them number one in sales satisfaction among hundreds of other GM and Honda dealers. Readers of the Rocky Mount Telegram voted them best automotive dealership. Could all these experts be wrong? Find out for yourself. The dealership, Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. They are your headquarters for Buick, GMC, Honda, and all types of pre-owned vehicles. Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. Drive the best. We're your news team bringing it home to you with meteorologist Fred Holdsworth, anchor Marie Torres, sports reporter Edward Green, and Matt Havitt, our studio guy. WHIG TV Newsbreak, your voice in the community. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. 
Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Thank you for staying with us. Here with a look at the days ahead is WHIGTV meteorologist Fred Holdsworth. Fred? The thunderstorm and activity in our area last night, the lightning detector showed a pretty widespread uh, amount of activity as that front moved through our area and quite a bit of cloud to ground lightning as well as some heavy rain, although it was rather brief, we did pick up over half an inch of rain during that storm during the night. A secondary cold front will move through our area during the day today and that will maybe give us a shower, but that's about it. Won't be anything like last night. And then we'll settle down for a couple of days of sunny weather, although it will be a bit cooler, about 15 degrees cooler today than it was yesterday and a little cooler tomorrow than it will be today. And then we'll see some rain come back into our area around Saturday afternoon, or at least a chance of rain. Well, let's go to our forecast map and see what we have going on. By this afternoon, we'll have a low pressure area right in here, right along eastern North Carolina, probably in the vicinity of Washington, North Carolina trailing a cold front down through the Florida Panhandle into Louisiana, and then it becomes a warm front, and this will set off some thunderstorms in Texas. The low pressure will move to the east, but it's going to pull down a little bit of cool air with it. So as, as you go farther to the north in West Virginia, a mixture of rain and snow, and then by the time you get into southern Pennsylvania, northern Maryland, you'll be in all snow. Then, farther to the north, another area of snow covering much of New England, extending into the Quebec province right here. And this is something, as I've been saying, they really don't need this because once it starts melting, there's going to be some flooding problems in that area. Then as we go farther to the west, we have an area of rain extending from central Nebraska all the way through Kansas down into Oklahoma. And then typically this time of year we see the higher elevation snow here in the Rockies and westward to the Cascades. Heavy snow is possible in the western portions of California through the Cascade Mountains. Yet another Pacific storm moving ashore. This is bringing some rain and thunderstorms to the coast and rain and snow in the higher elevations of the Rockies. So they are still getting snow. They're still pretty much hooked up with winter time. And what is happening here, we have a trough of low pressure that is dipping down into this area and bringing them air cold enough to cause snow, particularly at the higher elevations. Well, no snow around here in our forecast. We'll take a look at our forecast now. and. Today, we'll have skies becoming sunny this afternoon with a high of 68. North wind 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting up around 30. Tonight, clear with a low of 35. North wind at 7. Friday, sunny with a high of 59. A northeast wind at 5. Friday night, cloudy with a low of 40. Winds will be south and become east around 7 miles per hour. Saturday, cloudy with rain developing during the afternoon with a high of 58. Winds will be out of the north at seven miles per hour. Saturday night, rain with a low of 44. Chance of rain on Sunday with a high of 55. Sunday night, mostly cloudy with a low of 36. And back to a chance of rain on Monday with a high of 56 and a low of 34. Our high temperature yesterday at our weather station, 80 degrees and our low this morning was 53. And that's a look at your Rocky Mount weather. Now back to you. 
Thank you, Fred. And here with us now is Edward Green with our sports report. What's the latest in sports, Edward? Uh, well, we've been talking about college basketball a lot lately. Duke plays tonight, Carolina plays tomorrow night in their Sweet 16 matchups. But first, we want to get to a little bit of hockey news. Okay. Our season's winding up, so it's time to get into full playoff mode there. Okay. Well, even the warm temperatures we've been having outside won't cool the ice on, or won't melt the ice, rather, at, at the RBC Center in Raleigh, North Carolina, which the Carolina Hurricanes call home. Now, but currently this, the Canes sit outside the playoff picture in ninth place. And with only nine games to go in the regular season, Carolina is hoping to get hot in order to stay cold. During practice at the RBC Center in Raleigh, the Carolina Hurricanes try to stay loose against the mounting pressure to make the playoffs. Last season was tough for Carolina, missing the playoffs after making the Eastern Conference Finals in 2009. Centers Tuomo Rutu and Brandon Sutter are determined to not have a repeat of last year's campaign. I mean, it was just, just tough, uh, too long of a summer. I mean, uh, we're, we're hockey players, we want to play hockey as long as, uh, as, long as we can and try to win. Uh, you know, last year wasn't a whole lot of fun uh, going home in the middle of April, so uh, you know we're excited. We want to stay here a little bit longer and play a little longer. And uh, you know, once you get in that top eight, anything can happen after that. So uh, we just got to try and get in and um, you know let the rest take care of itself. One break in the schedule gives the Canes five of their last nine at home. Something the team hopes can help give them that last push. Yeah, it's huge. We got our uh, kind of our tough road trips out of the way with the start of the year, and I think uh, at the time it was kind of tough, but uh, it's paying off now. We got to spend some time at home here in the spring, and uh, you know we got to try and take advantage of these games that we do have at home. You know, I think it's uh, it depends how you use it. I mean, you can't go out there and think about everything's going to come easy because you play at home. Um, it, you you got to use it. You got to use your fans. You know, to, you got to come out hard. Well, the schedule does line up favorably for the Hurricanes these last nine games, with five of them being at home. Many of them will come against playoff-ready teams. Yeah, every game's tough now. Uh, this time of year, everyone's playing well, so um, you know we got to make sure we're, we're, we're good defensively. You know, first and foremost. But uh, uh, you know, like you said, we're playing tough teams every night. Teams that we're fighting with for spots. So uh, uh, it's it's definitely more intense now than it was back in November. So we got to be uh, we got to be ready every night. Coach Paul Maurice, in his third season with Carolina, already is counting on one player to be a rock in order for his club to advance. Goalie Cam Ward. He's had a spectacular season for us and uh, really uh, consistent over the course of the year and we rely on him heavily and uh, he's going to continue to play well, we believe. And with every late season push comes the nervousness from not only watching your own team play, but keeping track of the out-of-town scoreboard as well. We're cheering for a lot of teams you never thought we'd be cheering for, it, <laughs> and that's the way this works. So one night we're big fans of Toronto and the next night we're not so that's uh, that's the situation there's about five or six teams in right now but if the Hurricanes want to add another banner to the rafters the players know they first have to take care of their own business you know right now we only think about making the playoffs it doesn't matter you know uh, how we make it or, or, or what's gonna happen after that we just think about uh, making the playoffs and that's that's the bottom line and with Tuesday's win over the Ottawa Senators, the Hurricanes are still in ninth place, but keep pace with eighth place Buffalo. They sit just three points back. And Carolina has back-to-back -back games Friday and Saturday now against division rival Tampa Bay. The Saturday game is actually at home, so if anybody wants to go check out and support the Canes, you can go do that Saturday night. The game is at 7 o'clock. And uh, a little bit of NFL news before we get out of here today. Uh, the current negotiations between players and the NFL uh, owners yeah. are not going very well. Obviously, there's a lockout looming, and uh, one contingency person has already made their contingency plans. Apparently, Marty Schottenheimer, uh, coach, sixth all-time in the NFL in wins with 205, has been named coach and general manager of the United Football League team in Virginia. Okay. So, Marie, we'll see how many more big names decide to kind of jump ship before a new agreement can be reached. All right. Well, good, good, and and great reporting, Edward. Well, thank thank you. you so much. And thank you for tuning in to Newsbreak today. Join us next week as we continue to bring you news that's impacting our community. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. We'll see you next